Welcome back to Culture Bites. I'm Chef Rob Epps, and we're going to be talking salt in this segment. Salt is really with culture, every culture. Because without salt, society would not have progressed the way it did. It's very interesting to see how salt moved the culture in human society the way that it did. Societies and empires rose and fall in the salt trade thousands of years ago. And to this day, 92%, an estimated 92% of salt that we produce in the world is for culinary purposes, for eating purposes. And so it's a huge part of culture throughout the world. And so what we're gonna do today is a very unique kind of different take maybe on salt. We're gonna make a salt encrusted beef tenderloin. I'm gonna show you kind of a little trick here at how to do this. The idea is encasing this beef tenderloin in this crust of salt and dough. It's really gonna soak in and kind of concentrate all of that moisture and heat and really flavor that all the way through that beef tenderloin. And so what we've got is I've got some beef tenderloin I've trimmed it a little bit, taken off the silver skin, kind of taken some of the fat off of it. And that'll be our beef tenderloin. And then what we'll do is we're gonna actually make a dough. Very interesting and kind of a unique way to kind of introduce salt into this food. And so for our dough, I've got just regular flour, all-purpose flour. I've got kosher salt, and then I've got black pepper. And if you'd like to, you could always infuse in some herbs at this point. If you wanted to put in some tarragon or you wanted to put in some oregano or some rosemary, really infuse a different maybe profile. You want to go towards Italian, put in some oregano and put in some uh, nice you know, rosemary. If you want to go a little French influence, let's do some savory, let's do some tarragon and we can kind of steer that cultural part of the food into that different area. To get the dough to kind of come together, I've got water and egg whites. The egg whites are really gonna help bind that dough together, okay? So, simple and quick and easy to make the dough. Got a nice mixing bowl. I'm gonna take my flour. Take my salt, lots of salt, about three cups of flour, a cup and a half of salt. About a tablespoon and a half of black ground pepper. And just stir this up to kind of make it all mix together. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our wet ingredients, our water and our egg whites, pour that kind of in a, a well in the middle of our flour and kind of just bring this together. It's a very common way to make dough, especially for things like pasta, and crackers and things like that. And so what you're going to do with this dough is you're just going to kind of work it together until it forms kind of like a ball. And then what you want to do is you want to get in there with your hands and you're going to knead this dough for about five minutes, just until it comes together. I'm going to show you what it'll look like. It's going to come together into a nice dough, just like this. And then what you want to do when you get this nice dough, flatten it out, wrap it in a little plastic wrap, and then stick it in the refrigerator. You can store this in your refrigerator for you know, two hours up to 24 hours before you use it. So you could always do this ahead of time. If you need to keep it longer, you can, but there's not really a reason to hold it longer than that. So while this is in the refrigerator resting for an hour or two, what you want to do is sear the outside of our uh, beef tenderloin. We want to get a little color on this because enclosing this in that salt dough is going to prevent the heat from getting color on the outside. So by searing it now, it's gonna kind of sear in those juices and give it a nice color. So then when we encase it with that nice salt dough, it's gonna add that seasoning and add that flavor. So my pan's nice and hot. Take that nice beef tenderloin and sear it. And really, this is the only point that we're gonna to get to really get that color on the outside of that beef. Now you notice I didn't add any salt or pepper at this point. Again, when we're gonna encase this in that salt dough, that's really gonna be the flavor and the seasoning infusion while it cooks in the oven. So really all I wanna do is get that color and that sear on the outside of the meat. So really let that brown nicely on all sides. Get that color nice and brown and seared in there. So what we need to do is we need to roll out our dough so while that beef is browning, we're gonna let it rest for about five minutes while we roll out our dough. And very simply, just like rolling out any other kind of dough, like a pie dough, your crust or your pie, same idea. Nice table, cleaned off, dry. 
Got my rolling pin, some flour. Lightly dust that table. You might need more flour, so just add a little at a time. If it starts to get a little sticky, we'll put more flour and keep rolling. My dough. And you want to think, okay, how big is that piece of meat? So how big do I need to roll this so that covers that meat completely? Cooking with heat, cooking with fire. We need that nice high heat. All right, so I'm gonna roll this out. Kind of think rectangle. We've got that nice color on that beef, nice and brown. I would let that sear on all sides. I'm gonna let that rest for about five minutes and then I'm gonna completely uncover or encase in that dough. So what you're looking for, kind of roll it over, kind of tuck it around on all sides. So what we've got is this looks just like a little piece of bread almost or a loaf of bread. And that dough with all that salt and all that seasoning, as it bakes in the oven, we're gonna roast this at 400 degrees until the internal temperature of that roast beer, that beef tender one, it's about 125 degrees. And then as it rests, it's gonna carry over to medium rare, which is what you should serve beef at. You don't want well done. You wanna go medium rare and we'll talk about that. But while this is baking, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go out, do a little segment out on the street and talk about salt with the people out in the street. So I'm gonna bake this in a hot oven, 400 degrees, for about 40 minutes, until that internal temperature reads about 125 degrees. So, come on out to the segment, enjoy that segment, come back to the kitchen, and we'll finish this off. Hi, I'm Paul. And I'm Paul. We're what you call salt experts. But we want to know what the average person knows about salt. Salt tastes like, um, it's kind of sweet, it's kind of sour, kind of a mix of both. Um, but yeah, I would say like it's very, it's like a piercing taste. Um, tangy, bitey. Kind of. Yeah. Not salty-ish. Like, tastes like everything good. <laughs> it's like the opposite of sweet. <laughs> Bitter? Bitter? I would say a, a very mild, gentle burn that courses along the side of your tongue. <laughs> Dude, I don't know how to describe it without <laughs> using the word salt. <laughs> A thousand. Eight hundred. Is that a lot? Go a little higher. Or a lot higher. Sixteen hundred. Thirty pounds. Maybe. Thirty. Thirty pounds. In One million milligrams. I mean, I, I know it's a high amount. I know Americans consume a lot, but I have no idea what it'd be in milligrams. Thirty pounds. Six. Six milligrams. Six milligrams. Six. Uh, one ton. One ton. All right. It's you're close. It's thirty-four hundred milligrams. Welcome back. Well, we've let that beef tenderloin roast in that oven at 400 degrees. Again, we were looking about 40 minutes for that internal temperature to read 125 degrees. So when I did that, I temped my meat out, it was 125, I just let it rest. I just let it sit and let it rest for about a half an hour. And during that time, you let meat rest like especially larger cuts so that that juices will start to redistribute you get all of that nice moisture throughout. That salt crust is gonna sit there and also start to infuse more of that flavor and seasoning into the meat. 
And then it also will continue to cook because all that heat from the outside is going in. And so now what I've got is I've got this at about 135 degrees, which is medium rare. And that's what you want for beef. To get this out of here, it's very simple. You're just going to cut that crust off on one end, just to open it up. And then you can take that beef, kind of see it in here, and you can just take it with a pair of tongs and pull that out of there. Now again, remember we seared that meat nicely before we roasted it, so you got that nice color on the outside. All of the seasoning from the salt and pepper are in the dough, and so as that cooked, it just set it in and infused into the meat as it cooked. So to serve the beef tenderloin, what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice this nice and thin, and then we're gonna serve it with some sauteed asparagus. You could grill your asparagus, you could just saute it lightly with a little bit of oil or butter, salt and pepper. And I've got some assortment of baby potatoes. We have some purple Peruvian potatoes, some baby reds, and some baby Yukon gold. Salt, pepper, a little oil, and then just roasted them in the oven until they were nice and tender and ready to go. We're gonna slice that beef. Serrated knife, something nice and sharp. Something very long and thin is good for long cuts and big cuts of meat. We're gonna cut that against the grain. So a piece of meat like this, you could tell when I was trimming it that the muscle goes in this direction. So to cut this, I'm gonna cut against the grain. It will make it more tender as we eat it. So we're gonna slice that against the grain. And that first piece is for the chef. So we'll save that for later. And then we'll cut slices off for our customer here. You can see that nice medium, medium rare is what we want. got my plate. I'm going to take some of my potatoes. Make sure you get a couple of each of them. Some of the red, some of the Yukon. A couple of these really fun purple potatoes to impress your friends and your, your dinner guests. It's about good for one serving. Nice asparagus. And we're going to take that meat and kind, of kind of let it shingle across the plate here. Now you could make a nice sauce to go with this, but again, because we use that salt and pepper crust to really season that piece of meat, it's gonna enhance that natural flavor of that beef. That salt's gonna set in there and really make that beef taste more like beef. And so it should be seasoned exactly how you like it. And again, if you'd like a little gravy, a little sauce with that to finish it off, perfectly fine. Well, thank you for joining us for Culture Bites. Check with us again another segment and we'll hit another spice and we'll talk about another culture. Thank you.